How's it going everyone? So it's been an extremely long time since I've done a pickups. Um, just not at the time. I uh, went to Poland on holiday. Uh, just getting around to filming with work and everything. So the stuff is everywhere. Um, some of the stuff, um, I say most of my car boot stuff, obviously you normally see in my other videos. Uh, I've got some car boot stuff in this video just because I purchased one of these. So it's just a, a cross tour camera. I think it was about 40 quid. I thought, you know, I'll just go around the car boot with it strapped to me. Um, at first I was a bit like, eh, because it's sort of everyone else. There's a lot of people who do that. But I thought if I sort of integrated my other videos into the live footage, then I thought it would be pretty good. Uh, so filmed loads of stuff, got some good stuff. So I was just like, oh, awesome. I uh, got home and most of the stuff had got corrupt. I'm not sure how. Um, I know the battery ran out while I was filming, so whether that was something to do with it. So basically the good stuff, obviously, um, got corrupt. So I might put that in at the end. I might splice it in as I show you the, the non-great stuff, but just some footage. So obviously, I was, like I said, it was going to be one of my videos, copy exchange, but... Yeah, didn't work. And then obviously, by the time I got home, I'd already packed it all away and sorted it out. Because normally I'll come back from the car boot, set up, and then, you know. So, yeah. So I think there's like three or four videos from the car boot on there. So I'm not sure why it corrupted. So hopefully I will sort that out. Maybe I should have formatted the memory card before I did it. It's funny because I actually filmed one of the pickups, went on the camera and watched it all the way through while I was at the car boot, and when I got home it corrupt. So I tried um, repairing it, but say I had some cashback money, so I think that cost me like twenty quid in the end. So yeah, uh, we even got Leeds pickups here, which the Leeds Super Retro Fair, which was it's got to be a month ago now. I can't even remember. I've got stuff here which I'm not. I can't remember what I paid for it. But yeah, some nice, some alright car boot stuff there. A couple of boo boos I dropped on some of it, but uh, one real nice thing. Uh, like I said, most of that's going to go CX. So, so where shall I start? There's literally stuff stacked up everywhere. Uh, I'll start with Leeds actually. Seems I think that was the farthest away thing I did. <laughs> uh, so yeah, went Leeds, had a stall. Uh, you may have seen me there. Um, nice to see everyone as as always. Uh, so yeah, get there. Uh, it's always nice to get look around before the the crowds come in. Um, I don't like being cramped in places. Uh, although it wasn't it wasn't as packed out as usual. There was a lot of people there, but um, it sort of, they sort of thinned out within the first hour, so it wasn't really um, like I remember when they used to do it in the town hall. Maybe because it was uh, there's more tight corridors and stuff. Um, but it used to be like absolutely chocker, you could not move. Uh, same for uh, uh, Doncaster slightly. Uh, first thing, it gets so like packed, there's just nowhere to go. Um, whether it's because they're doing too many, I don't know. Uh, did I do all right? Yeah, I, I did pretty well. Uh, well, yeah, I made some money. Not as good as I have at Doncaster, so... Maybe that's a sign that I should just Doncaster. Also leads this further away from me, so it's sort of like it's an extra forty minutes in the car, so especially when you're travelling back. Once you've packed everything up in the car, which never goes back in the car. You get it all in there, you cram it all in on the other end, no matter how much you sell, you cannot get it back in the car and <laughs> So yeah. Uh so yeah. Um yeah, usual suspects there. Um from a stall order perspective, um, you've got sore thumbs, because uh, I don't really buy much off them. Uh, I think they're sort of overpriced slightly. Um, I'm trying to think who else there is. Uh, there's a few chaps on, I've seen I see them on Facebook, and they normally buy big, uh, lots of stuff, saw them there. Again, I sort of gravitate to the more um, collector, stalls who are just sort of filling out the collection because obviously they have better prices and um, 
These first three, I'm not sure if he's a collector or a reseller, but his prices are pretty spot on to be fair. And he's, there's always room, to be fair. Uh, there's always room, uh, there's always wiggle room in the price, which I like. I know a couple of the, the big end stores are like, no, straight on, no, no, they won't discount anything, which is a bit. Mm. But yeah, so anyway, all these have still got the prices on. Uh, so, actually, no, I think I know how much these were. So, I must have picked this up about three or four times. Uh, it's not mint, um, but apart from that, uh, apart from the little, I think it's mainly the problem with the case, the inlay. Uh, it's not a bad copy, and like I say, it's quite an expensive game, you'll see it. <laughs> and it's a uh, maximum carnage for the Mega Drive. And obviously it was £80, so quite a heavy hitter. Um, internally, it's pretty nice. Manual's a little bit dogged. Uh, a lovely red cartridge, though. Um, and the only problem with it is just here. You see that? It's actually ripped. The inlay's actually ripped. Um, it's probably been case swapped at some point. You know, sometimes the corners go and then the plastic tears and they just wear away. But they've obviously slapped it in a new case. So that was £80. So I said... Any better on that? And he said, um, he said 75. So I was just like, okay, check to eBay. Um, 75 could will get you a copy of this, but probably not in as good condition as this. Maybe missed the manual. I think a manualist one was about 70 to 75 quid. So anyway, I thought I'll try and bundle a few other things in there. And this game has eluded me for the longest time. Not a rare game. Um, just, I can never find it in good condition, and when it is in good condition, it's always ridiculously expensive. But uh, it's it is a great game, and at the time of release, I thought it was pretty um, um, impressive for the Mega Drive. And it's Comic Zone. Uh, it's twenty five quid. This one is, it's, I'd say near mint. Now he had three copies of this. One was on his shelf, so I thought that's probably going to be the best condition one. It wasn't. It had, um, I can't remember, it definitely had writing on the cartridge. So I was just like, okay, that put me off. And as I walked over, there was two more in the bucket. Uh, again, one wasn't great condition, and then there was this one. And they're all, they're all the same price. They're all 20, 25 bones. So I was like, if you do, I'll take that for, I'll take Maximum Carnage for 75 if you do that for 20 and he was like, so um, no, and he was like, yeah, go on then. So yeah, so that was 20 quid. Again, that is, for one in this condition, you're probably talking 30 quid all day long. You could probably get a, a manualist one for 20. Um, there is a version with the CD, which goes for about 50 quid, but there's no difference in the actual box, you could say. So you, you could, if you could source the CD, you could just put it in your copy and I don't think there is anyway, unless there's a sticker on the front. Might be a sticker on the front saying there's a CD. Not sure. And then just to round it off, because obviously that was 95 so far, I just picked up this one. Uh, just one, just a filler tile, but one you don't see very often. I don't think it's on CX. Um, uh, Kickoff free. A nice blue spine. Uh, that was £6. So I was like, would you do that for a five? He's like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, this one is the manual, so it doesn't want to stay in, but say for a fiver, again, you, you'd pay three pound postage on eBay for that. And I don't think it's not it's not your common sports tile. It's slightly more desirable that one. So I'd say probably about ten on that one. So all in all, I thought that was a pretty good deal for a hundred. So that was the biggest pickup I probably did. Uh, I'll show this next. Uh, this was towards the end. I uh, sort of had one last quick look round. I saw this and I was like, oh, okay. Um, and I've been looking for it for a while. Um, with it comes, You can get it with a sleeve, which I think was like the original print run. Uh, it's nothing special, it's just a PS4 game. But it's Valkyrie Chronicles for the PS4, sealed with the slip case. 
Um, it's got a couple of dings on it. Um, I think he said 10 quid on that. It could have been 8 quid, something like that. But I thought, you know, for a sealed copy with a nice, con nice condition all day long. So I'll probably play this. If you watch my videos, you probably notice I picked it up on PS3 quite a while ago. Oh, not quite a while ago. But one of my CX videos, I think it was like four quid at CX. But um, might as well play it on a, a newer system. So that's quite nice. And now onto something completely, well, not completely different. It's still gaming related, obviously. Um, gaming magazines. So I've been trying to source the last few retro gamers for the for my collection. Uh, they're mostly lower issues, so sort of, and I think we're on like issue 150 now, so I do take up a lot of room though. <laughs> but uh, Tutu UK was there, always nice to see him. I think he'd been like shoehorned in the corner, so I think a lot of, a lot of the people sort of uh, overlooked him, or I'd already bought what they wanted by the time they got to him, because he was right at the back, so. Uh, but yeah, he had some retro gamers. Uh, he hooked me up here, to be, to be totally honest. Uh, what we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's ten issues there. I think he said he was doing it for two quid an issue, which is a great price. And he said for me, fifteen. So awesome. So I'll show you these quickly. I can't remember the issue number is. Oh, it's on the spine. I'm not going to show you the front cover because this video is going to be extremely long if I do that. So we've got 40, 41, 42, 44, 19, 22, 23, 45, 49, 57. So for 15 quid, and they're all in great condition. Um, I don't see if there's any with a standout cover, which I think is pretty cool. That's a pretty cool one, actually. I'll show you that. It's a Knights one, which is 45. It's got like snow on the retro gaming thing there, like sparkly snow. That's pretty, that's awesome. Knights. Knights is an awesome game. So yeah, that was £15, which I thought was quite a good price. So when they when they, re, they retail for five quid, so I think they, I think they put them up to 5 99 So I'm not sure... If people still buy them at that. Okay, so next up, so there's a store there, Sega Mags. Um, I can't remember the chap's name, but I know for think him and his friend are going for. They want to collect every single Sega magazine um, ever made in the UK. So they have lots of doubles because they buy up huge lots and then they shift them on. And I've always been interested in the Sega Saturn magazine. I know. Uh, two to UK's been going for this as well, um, but yeah, I just I don't know what it is about the Saturn at the moment. It's just drawing me in. Um, but yeah, say so I was just like, how many um, issues you got of it, and we worked it out, and I managed to get all these. I think they're three pounds an issue, which again, it's not not bad. One, two. So there's 19 there. I think he said it would have been about over 60 quid. Well, 19, I'm sorry. Just under like 57 quid, is it? Something like that. Um, and he's, so he knocked seven quid off. He said 50 quid. And I was just like, uh In Because when you think about it, you go, oh, 50 quid for some magazine, that's a lot of money. But then when you think, when you work it out, um, so I was just like, would you do 45? And he says, yeah, that's fine. Um, I can imagine he has to shift his stock pretty quickly if he keeps buying it to get the magazine as he wants. Um, also, he, he, um, very knowledgeable on, on, I think he said this was his favorite magazine, actually. So there's some condition varies. There's some really good ones, um, some not so good ones. Again, I don't think I'll go for all of these. Um, I just so we've got 24, 23, 22, 18, 17, 15, 14, 6, 4, 5, 
27, 30, 33, 16, 34, 36, 35, 28, and 32. So, and he was saying, uh, I think Stuart was also speaking about this, that a lot of people think, oh, issue one, it's the hardest to get. It's not, it's, it is not the hardest to get. It's the last few issues are the hardest to get. We were saying the print run on the first run, the first few issues, they're not 100% sure on how many they're going to sell. So they do a bigger print run. And then obviously, and as time goes on, people lose interest in the Saturn and then they stop buying the magazine. So the last few, I think, I, think, oh, I can't remember. I think, is it 37, the last issue? Could be. Well, here's 36 anyway. And they're already touting the Dreamcast on it. So... Yeah, I mean, I'm looking through it and it's, mo <laughs> it's mostly, um, it's mostly Dreamcast stuff here. I think the whole magazine looks pretty much <laughs> Dreamcast. Um, but so is the, the run out of games to show. Um, any ones that stand out to me? Let's have a quick look. Uh, yep. Yeah, see, there's quite a few here with Dreamcast logos on. Um, no cover discs, that's another thing I'd say. Um, I might get them in the future. So, I'll have to... Won't be something I'll be actively going for, but... Yeah, that's a cool one. It's got Panzer Dragoon Saga on. Probably one of the best games on the Saturn. So this one's entirely Sega Saturn fruit in this one, so yeah. So 45 for them, I thought was a pretty good price. So I'm not sure I'm missing, I think he said there's 37. So I'm missing 16, no, not 16, uh, 10. So I'm missing 17 still. 17 left to get, move them over there. That's it. So that was the Leeds Retro Fair. Um, and that was, I wasn't gonna do another one, um, a stall at any conventions, but I have if you saw my last video, the one before, I got a huge pickup off Facebook, so I'm probably going to have to try and do one. I'm thinking maybe I might do Bristol, but it's because it's on a Sunday, it's sort of, I don't know, I feel like people, there'll be less people there, because they can't be bothered to go on a Sunday, <laughs> if that sounds fun, that sounds stupid. Because I, me personally, I'd have a work the next day, so I'd have to book the day off, the day after, because I don't really, because once I get back from these events, I'm absolutely shattered. Because you get up about four, and if, you, if I'm going to Bristol, it's going to be getting up at probably three o'clock, getting ready, set off at four. Uh, it's about a three hour drive from where I am, maybe slightly longer, but won't much traffic. Get there at seven, and then I imagine on the way back, it might be a bit longer because of the traffic in the afternoon. So we'll see, we'll see, might be that one. Um, I also find the ones that later in the year, near Christmas, don't do as well. Maybe it's just I've done a, two, I think, near the end, and they were just they weren't as good. I normally find that the start of the year is the best because I think people just have Christmas. Um, depends which way you look at it, I suppose, because you might think, oh, Christmas, people just spend all the money at Christmas, but then um, a lot of people probably got money for Christmas, so don't know. One of them, there's so much stuff I've got, you know, if I've got to shift it, I've got to shift it. So, a couple of random bits here. This is a lot of random stuff, actually. Um, shop locally to, well, uh, go, I went to CX, traded some shit in, and there was a new gaming shop, sort of a gaming shop, sort of phone shop, sort of reselling shop. Um, I had a quick look, couldn't really see anything apart from this. Uh, it's a Zelda Wiimote, and as you can see, it said eight pounds on it. Um, and at first, I thought oh, it looks a bit fake because it has a white button on the back, and I was like, and the white buttons on the front, because I've got one of these, and I thought it was gold. I thought it was all gold. Um, so I sort of checked the internet, and so it's like that. So battery performance was good. I mean, very nice condition. And eight quid, I think CX could be 12 for it. So if I wanted to make a quick four quid, I would. Uh, might just hold on to it. I feel like that in the future, that's going to be something which might be desirable, maybe. Uh, I don't know. 
I like holding on to stuff. <laughs> Maybe one day I'll show you my box of sealed random games. Uh, so yeah, eight quid, good price. A uh, couple of random shop Xbox One pickups here. Um, I don't know what it is about buying Xbox One games and they arrive and the case is smashed. This is another one. Uh, it's nothing bad, but I'm going to have to replace it at some point. But anyway, I have bought Metal Gear Solid 5. Um, this is the definitive edition. It comes with Ground Zero and the Phantom Pain. Now when this turned up, it wasn't sealed like a normal seal. It was like shrimp, uh, like shrink wrapped. So I was just like, okay. And I thought it was two discs, but it's not. It's obviously they could they fit it all on one disc. Because um, when it says uh, Ground Zero and the Phantom Pain, which is obviously they released them separately, I thought I'll probably just shift in excess copies of Ground Zero and put them in a, in with this. But yeah, no, it's a completely reprinted disc. So um, I look forward to playing that. Uh, here it's pretty good. Here the story sort of goes off the edge of a cliff at the end because obviously the whole Kojima Konami uh, situation. Uh, so yeah, it will never be fully uh, finished, you could say. Uh, 10 99 thought it was a good price. They had one in CX for a tenner. Went to get it, it was water damaged, like all wrinkled. I was just like, ah, I'll just buy it off the internet. Uh, yeah, the case is smashed here, so I'll just have to replace that at some point. That's over here. Uh, one more. Um, I don't know why I bought this. <laughs> so Tesco's have these crazy sales where they just put everything on clearance for like a tenner or less. Um, there was quite a few, there was a few games I was interested in, I can't remember. I know currently you can get Dark Souls for seven quid, Dark Souls Remastered, which has just come out for seven pounds. Obviously no copies anywhere. Um, I think the woman at the car said someone bought them all, so yeah, what are you going to do? I probably bought them all as well, so I can't, I can't, um, chat shit about that person because I would have done the same because <laughs> I think Dark Souls Remastered is like £19 trading at the time of me recording this so for 7 quid of course you're going to go flip them I'd have probably kept one for me I know my mate at work wanted one but it is what it is and so anyway they had this one for a tenner I was just like it's not too bad I always wanted to play one of these games and it's Farming Simulator 17 Platinum Edition. <laughs> so yeah, uh, look forward to trying that. So these are pretty good games. Uh, I'll be the judge of that when I play it. <laughs> but that was £10. I think CX sell it for like 20 And that's just the normal edition. They don't list the Platinum version. So I'm just sort of, is it a code or is it all on the disc? Is it like the reprint of the disc of extra font? I don't know. Right, next up. He just ran, gr grabbing random stuff now. This, very happy about this. This is a eBay purchase, and not eBay, a Facebook purchase. Um, this was from a chap called Devlin Turner, I think. I bought stuff from him before. Uh, I don't know where he gets, uh, he, I know he goes to the car boots, but I think he's a bit of a, he'll buy uh, lots of bulk lots. Um, and his prices are normally really good. And I thought this was a pretty good price. I think, I want to say it was £75, or was it 85 something like that. Um, it's a 2DS, but it's oh, it was only released in, uh, sorry, I'm slouching, I'm slouching like this, got my arm down. How rude of me. Um, let me, uh, it's a beanbag, busting my back. Uh, yeah, so, and I've done a couple of exclusive ones in... America. I think there was a blue one for Mario Kart. Um, I want to say there was a Pikachu one, but I'm not sure. But anyway, there's a green one. Uh, green and gold, so you can probably guess what it is. Zelda one. Uh, Ocarina of Time. Sealed this is. Um, say, lovely condition. Um, it's like, yeah, I think the buttons are gold. It looks like yellow on the front there so maybe it's just the trim around the outside which is uh gold but uh, yeah the box is really small i was surprised but i suppose the american plugs are 
thinner so they can get them in a thinner box because um, they actually give you a AC adapter in these you know not like over here where you have to buy it separately because Nintendo <laughs> um, yeah uh, probably gonna keep it sealed I was gonna open it because there's a couple of uh, American exclusives that I was interested in I was I want to say oh, what is, it? is it run run factory 4 and there was a game by Atlas Shigami Tensei 4 Something like that. Uh, we only got them digitally, so like I said, 75 quid. I'll wrap that back up before I drop it. But, but yeah, I thought that was a good price. You got no room for anything. Uh, okay, we'll do this next. This is going to be a long video. Uh, this is actually, I was coming back from the Leeds Festival, the Leeds Fair. Um, I don't want to take this out or not. Might do just to show you my concerns I had with it. So yes, this popped up on Facebook. It was, again, I think it was £78. It's a Super Nintendo game. I've had this in the past and I sold it uh, back when I was a kid. I think I bought it from the car. I bought this from the car boot with a Super Nintendo and a load of games for 10 quid. I uh, sold this for 40 which at the time was a pretty good price. Uh, at the time was a was, was, was quite high-end when you're a kid and you're only like 10 12 years old i was like wow 40 pounds um so yeah it, now it's the cartridge which i was a bit unsure about this i thought it was a bit fake so so anyway the game is i took it all out now castlevania 4 um so the box is pretty good condition a little ding there um, just some general shelfware really on that. Manual's good. And now the cartridge, this is what I was like, I don't know I was looked at it for, it's, it's fake. Um, but I have opened it and the board's legit. Um, just, it's just the label, it looks so shiny. So, I mean it has got scuffs on, now I'm looking at it, but yeah. There it is, Castlevania 4. You see the glare on that? That bad boy. Um, I've compared it to a few of my other games, and yeah. It is it is slightly shinier, but yeah. So yeah, but say the board's legit. So it must just be a really shiny copy of it. <laughs> Let's say a mint one of these can go for over 100 now. So when I saw this, I was like... That's another thing that I'm going to call the bloke out on this because he sent me, I bought it and then he sent me a thing straight after going, I packaged it up, you know, showed me a picture of it. I was like, all right. Anyway, a week later, nothing, nothing's turned up. So, you know, and I don't like to jump down people's throats. I don't like to, you know, because it gets here when it gets here. You know, I'm not, I don't care how long it takes, but please just let me know what you're doing, whether you posted it. Or if you've got a tracking number or something. But he didn't. So a week later, I sent a message going. He goes, oh, sorry for the delay. I just sent it this morning. So I was just like, oh, okay. No problem, not bothered. Um, so anyway, a week later, still not here. I was just like, what the fuck is going on? He said he'd sent it a week ago. So if it was like, it was like a few days later, it finally turned up. Um, check the sticker on the box. He'd sent it like, like the day like two days before I'd received it. So I was like, so what have you been doing for two weeks? I was like, Jesus Christ. Um, uh, an, an eBay purchase here. Uh, this is a nice one. Um, oh, it's on the outside. Uh, yeah, I was actually sitting in the pub when I, this came up. Uh, Mega Drive game. I believe it was up for 85. Just come up. I said, would you take 80? Uh, Again, there's another there's another problem with this one when I bought this. I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with people, really. Uh, but it's Flink, is it, for the Mega Drive? Very sought after game. Uh, like I said, I think it was up for eighty five. I offered him eighty, or was it seventy five? And I offered seventy. It's so long I can't remember. But all I know is it's a pretty good price. Uh, it's, it only hovers around the hundred mark. Probably, obviously, slightly less without a manual. Uh, this one is complete and very nice condition. 
Um, and again, I was like, I, thought, I was thinking, is this fake? Because there's no name on the label. It doesn't say, just it's just blank. Uh, it's just how it is. It's just how this game is. Um, so anyway, bought it. Uh, newish, I think he had less than 10 feedback. Uh, paid with PayPal, so not a problem. It sends a message going, oh, the money's not cleared. I was like, yeah, because you're a new seller, so you have to wait for me to receive it, and I'll give you feedback, and then that initiates you getting your money. He's like, I don't have any money in my account to send it. I was just like, oh, my God. So he's like, uh, it'll be next week when I can send it, because I need to be paid from work. I was just like, okay, I don't mind waiting. So next week rolls around, he sends it me. Um, I get it, I'm happy with it, leave feedback. The money still isn't clear. And he's like messaging me going, I need the money, I need the money. I was just like, it's nothing to do with me. I can't I can't do anything on my end. I've left you good feedback. Um, so I think he got it in the end, but like, always a problem, always a problem. Okay. I'll quickly show you this. This is a Lego Dimension set. It's, um, say, I keep buying these and it turns out there's still more to buy. Uh, this is one of the bigger sets. This is the Lego Batman movie. Um, so yeah, I think there was the last few, I bought most of the last ones in Sainsbury's because they were on clearance. And then I went back in to get this one and to put more up to, I think this was back up to 29.99. I was just like, okay, I thought you were on clearance, but. 15 they put it back down to 15 in the end because I thought I think they realized we've got to clear these because no one's buying it because Lego Dimensions is dead so that's pretty nice 15 um, next up God, there's so much to look at another eBay purchase <coughs> so this stuff I don't know why that's in there um, I was looking for Dreamcast games um, if you watch my video you know I need one more uh, but I'm not showing this one. This is this is not the last one. This is just one. I did that video before this one, basically. But I had this, like I say, I've had this <laughs> this ages. Uh, came up, it was like buy it now, fifteen quid for these four games, and there was one Dreamcast game I needed. So I was just like, oh, awesome! I'll I'll get that. So the Dreamcast game I need or needed was the Catty World. Um, yeah, nice condition. Uh, case is bust there as always. <laughs> ah, chopped the inlay in the thing. No. Shitty cases. So that was in there. And then there was uh, this one World of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Unfortunately, no Manuel, but it is very nice condition. So, might keep hold of it. I'm not sure. It is one I need. Um, just the gin at this one's pretty bad. Um, Mega Games 2, again, no manuals for that one. And then this one, which was a loose cart of Sonic 2. Um, the label has gone a bit a bit weird on this. I think the glue's, the glue's doing that thing where it goes on manky. But uh, I actually had a case, an empty case, from a while ago. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, so that is now complete. And funny enough, I don't own something too. So that's one for the collection right there. So for 15 quid for that, it's a good buy. And this, to buy this separately, is like, look at it rattling around, like eight pounds, something like that. So, art is crying. I can hear him in the other room. So that's that. Um... Yeah, we're nearly, well, we're not nearly there. There's still loads. It's, this could break the hour mark. This could be a record. <laughs> so, charity shop finds. I know uh, people, a couple of people got a little salty in my last video. You know, the, if you watch the big haul one, someone accused me of ripping a charity shop off because I don't, because I paid. I, I don't really understand because I just, I, all I did was paid what they wanted for it. But I was he accused me of ripping a charity shop off, so yeah. And we all know that all charity shops, the amount of money which actually gets through to the to the good cause of the charity shop gets filtered down for these these CEOs and these big wigs and uh 
actually the amount of money which actually gets to the cause, the good cause, is very little. So, uh, and also I wasn't ripping anyone off because they, that's what they wanted for it, and I gave them what they wanted for it. So, so anyway, I mean, yeah, just a couple of random things here. Uh, Mortal Kombat is a pound, so I think it's about three quid in CX. Um, Kelly Slater's Pro Surfer. This is actually one I wanted. I'm trying to get all these Activision 02 um, sports ones. I think there's this one, all the Tony Hawks. There's, uh, is it Matt Hoffman, BMXing, or Dave Mirror? One of them. That's the same thing, really. I think there's a Sean White snowboarding one, and then there's, I think there's, some, there's one other, I can't remember what it is. But yeah, I had a quick go on that. It's, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a Tony Hawks guy. And, I don't know why I thought the controls would be the same in that, because obviously you're on a surfboard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a 75p. Uh, Alien Isolation, a pound. Um, I've already played that on Xbox One. Awesome game. Thought I'd play it again on the 360, get the achievements again. Uh, two, Wii U, two Wii U games here. So, not much money in these. Uh, condition, they have faded slightly. Uh, we've got Nintendo Land. So that was 125. And we party you for 125. And then the last thing up from the charity shop was. So I went in. Um, and they had this round the back. The woman says, Oh, we've got this, but we're going to put it out, but we can't pack test it. So. Are you interested in it? So I was just sort of like, eh. I was like, does it work? She goes, it turns on, but that's we don't know if the picture works. Um, and they did. It's PS3, and as you can see there, or probably I'm not sure you make that out because it's really badly written, really faintly written. But it says eight pounds anyway. So and it's got a power lead and the. Uh, controller charging cable just need a HDMI cable which I've got over there bought one from the from the pound shop turns out they, only, they you can only buy a meter long one which is literally nothing your TV would literally have to be like three centimeters away for it to reach so that was that um, and it came with a controller as well now the controllers pretty bust up but um, I'll probably keep this one just for I might use it because I can get a bit angry with my games. So I thought, I'll just keep this. And then, it's not it's a nice blue one. But just here, you can see someone's been gouging away at the button. I'm not sure why they did that. And just there, there's a chip out of it. Uh, I know CX uh, are bad for taking in lots of shit. But they will not take that, I don't think. So, But um, that leads me on to the Carboo layer. So... Remember that. So yeah, I'll keep that. If I break it, it's pretty much broke anyway. Okay. Oh god, this video is long. This is what happens when you let stuff stack up all over the place. So my local town had a like a yard sale on, and it's every year. You probably remember I've, I've done this before. Uh, now most of the stuff I've sold went to CX. Um, just get some credit. Which leads into that. <laughs> um, I was going to do a CX Carby Exchange, but I just thought, yeah. And obviously, I didn't have time to film one, so. But this is all that's left, really. <laughs> um, the point um, the night before, the people who run it put a thing up on Facebook going, oh, what are people looking for? Uh, what are people selling? Just to try and get the community sort of talking. And obviously, the resellers just descended on it. Um, there was a chap he asked like every single person what do you got what do you got in your video games old consoles nerf guns you know the, the usual and uh, some people were like no uh, some people were like yeah then obviously they'd be like what you got and then I know a woman had a Nintendo 64 um, she showed me some pictures because I was like oh why not? I sent a thing going oh I might be interested I'm local um it was a just a standard N64 expansion pack. 
Um, about 10, 10 games, I think. I think that was the best one was probably Majora's Mask. Um, and I was like, did you have a price in mind? She was like, someone's offered me 200. I was just like, okay, then. I was like, I was like, nah, that's too much for me. I was like, thank you anyway. Um, and then I actually went round to her house in the morning. I was just passing. Um, and she had a couple of like Wii games out. I was just like, quick look for them. I was like, oh, did you sell your N64? And she was like, oh, the person never turned up. I was just like, thinking, yeah, because they've said 200 just to pit, just to stop other people buying it, basically. I didn't say that too well. I was just like, all right. Um, I was like, that's like too much for me anyway. Um, so I had a quick chat with her. But yeah, just, it's they get, it gets worse every year. Like, you get more resellers. You see all the people from the car boot. I suppose you could say I'm a reseller. But uh, when it's like a local event, you don't expect that. But um, And it starts about 10, but I know most of the resellers go around about 8 o'clock and they just basically ask. I think some people were knocking on people's doors. They hadn't even, like, woke up. Uh, they'd obviously just gone knocked on the door and gone, oh, you got any video games? Which is, like, pretty wrong, but what do you do? So I think that I had bought... Uh, Chap had three 360 controllers. Now, two of them I took to CX. He wanted a quid each from. And I wasn't going to take them to CX because the analog sticks were pretty messed up on them. So I thought I'm probably not going to take it. Um, but they did take them. It turns out the analog sticks, as long as the rubber is still on, uh, it doesn't matter how worn it is. So well, I've still got one left. Um, I might try this at CX. I thought the analog stick was a bit loose, but it might be all right. The only thing is, it's had some leakage in it. So I might try and clean that, just take it to CX. They, they either take it or they don't, so there's that. Um, I just picked up this. This was a pound, too many legends. You don't really see this one very often. But I noticed when I opened it, there was a manual in it for, um, let me, which way does this, oh right, yeah, uh, Hack Infection Part 1, which is sort of, not a rare RPG, but it's cool to have a spare manual for it, for a quid. So that's pretty much what I bought, I bought a Kindle for three quid, um, I had a problem with that, because the update, um, basically the base system, you can't, it won't let you add your account. It'll just keep saying not available, not available, and you can't or you can't force an update on it. You have to manually download it on your laptop and then put it into the Kindle. And then once you've done that, it's fine. You can factory reset it, but it always revert back to the the firmware you've installed on it. So, so I've had a few like that, um, but I think that was let's say two three quid on that. Um, I don't think I bought anything else today. It was apps. There's just there was just too many people looking around, too many resellers. Uh, I think last year I did pretty well, but say this year was not so good. Okay, two games here I bought from uh, off the internet. Uh, I think one was four ninety nine, which is this one. It's a three DS game. Code name Steam. Looks like a tactical RPG sort of thing. Uh, and Puzzle Dragon Z. It's uh, Super Mario Edition. Uh, I do like these these match free sort of type games. Uh, Amanda's been playing that. Uh, she said pretty good. I think that was five ninety nine from I think it's the Games Collection, which is a pretty good website. I know they had Nino Kuni Two Collector's Edition for fifty pounds, which is an absolute stonking deal because I paid a hundred and forty. Uh, I think I mentioned it in the video when I bought it that I didn't think it was worth it. I thought they should have took some of the things out and made it cheaper. But uh, yeah, so 50 quid bargain. So, on to the next thing. We're getting there. Actually, I'll show you this next. So, with the few bits I took to CX, basically the Kindle, the, the controllers, which are 10 quid each at the time they were anyway. Uh, a couple of other bits. Uh, I bought this. 
Enemy Zero for the Saturn, some glare there. Um, it has the cardboard box. It's not very good condition, the box, but the all the di basically inside is pretty mint. Um, and I looked at this the week before, another shop near me had this, another CX, uh, and there was missing the cardboard box. It was 80, so I was just like, okay, that's not too bad. Anyway, a week later, the other one near me had this, but it wanted 100, so I was like, I thinking, fucking, I put up 100 quid, uh, 20 quid. It's one of those which, you know, if I see a better one for a fairly decent price, I'll probably get it and try and switch it around. But like I said, the cardboard boxes on them don't last very long, so what you can do, like I said, it's all there. Bought one of these boxer protectors off thingy, the last six quid, just to protect it. Um, but the story um, goes, gets a bit uh, funny from there. Someone on Facebook had one. Just the discs and the cases, no out of box. So I was like, uh, 35 quid. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. So I bought that. Uh, got it. Checked CX. I was like, it's still selling for 100 in CX. Uh, they give you £70 trading on it. So not going to get mint condition on it. But, you know, so I took it. I uh, had to test it, which is a bit weird. I was like thinking... I could understand a cartridge, testing a cartridge, but a disc, you just look at it, don't you? So, so that took like 40 minutes. Come back, uh, got my £70 trade, uh, but I took the manual out as well, because you don't need a manual in there if you're trading in boxed condition. So they gave me £70 for enemy zero, just two cases and the discs, basically, and I took the manual out, which I, I was thinking I could get 10 for this manual just to get even more money out of it. So someone might slate me for that, doing that, but hey, what you gonna do? I keep seeing stuff, I'm not showing. It's getting crazy. This is gonna be a super long video. We're nearly at 50 minutes. I'm gonna try and speed this up. So I went to Poland, uh, lovely country, very cheap food, alcohol, super cheap. I think a pint of beer is like £2.50, uh, slightly more in the tourist areas. Um, quite a few game shops. We went to Krakow, I think that's how you say it. A uh, couple of game shops, um, and I took too much money. Just you know, it just it was just so cheap. I just thought I'm gonna have to go to a game shop and just buy some stuff, like even if it's not the best price. Um, and so we went to two game shops, no, three game shops. And the thing I found is a lot of games over there didn't get a release in Poland. So they import either the European version or the UK version, depending. Um, some stuff does. I know The Witcher 3 did, because that's made in Poland. I uh, saw so God of War did. Uh, that might just be subtitled, though, in Polish. But anyway, I picked these up. Uh, one's quite a good find. The other two, yeah. So I bought Yamo. Uh, there is a two PS4 games, should I say. Yamoware Midnight Shadow. For the PS4, that was 99 gelotis, which is about 22 quid. So, I uh, check CX, it's like 10 quid. So, <laughs> and then I bought the Count Lucifer, is it? I think that's how you say it. Uh, sealed, and that was again, that was 99 gelotis. Sealed, this one again, it's about 22 quid. Converted, it's about Eight quid in CX. <laughs> it's about fifteen on on um, on Amazon. That's the one. Uh, I've actually played this one. This one is it's quite weird actually. It's quite funky. It's sort of a horror game. And then the last one I bought. Uh, I've seen this over here. It's not an expensive game, but it's comes in a steel book. It's, every time I see it, the steel book is absolutely knackered. Um, and it's tales of I can't even, I don't even know how to pronounce that. But anyway, this is this one. It's this one. And it's the day one edition. But that seems to be the only one I ever see, the day one edition. And um, like I say, it's always pretty beat up condition. Uh, and that was 109 Gelotis, which is about 25 quid. Um, so I thought that was a pretty good price for a sealed one of them. So you don't, you don't see them that often sealed. But they did have one other game I was looking at, which was Altai something sea of dust or something 
which is about 25 quid over it. It's going up. It's the last one they released on PS3. And every time I see it, it's the European version. They had it, and it turns out it wasn't the English version. All the others were English, they had. Just that one was not. So I was just like, fuck's sake. But yeah, so that was a trip to Poland. Very nice country. Uh, I definitely recommend that everyone should visit there once once in their lifetime. So, keeping with the RPG theme, I bought a Switch game. Can you guess which Switch game it is? RPG. Yes. I bought Octopath Traveler. I don't even have a Switch to play it. Um, I'm not open this yet. Um, it survived the padded bag. Um, I don't know why you put it in a padded bag. I was originally going to buy it from Nintendo for $79.99, which is overpriced for what you get in there, if you ask me. Yeah, $79.99, you got some art cards with it. Uh, it was sold out, so I was just like, gone on eBay. Now, Shop 2 had it for £79, and there was an offer on where I got like triple nectar points, so I got like three quid back in nectar points. Lo and behold, two days later, Nintendo Store has it back in stock. Now, I thought when I read the thing on the internet, what you get, that you got a soundtrack for this. Turns out that's just the American version. They thought, them Europeans don't deserve the soundtrack. We'll take that out and con them, basically. So you get the game, the pop up book, a uh, coin, and the map. And also, the map um, is just a paper map. The American version, which got the soundtrack, they got a cloth map. So again, they've they fucked us over on that. And for £80, probably not going to be worth it, but it's one of those games, I, I watched like a couple of reviews, and I was just like, that's my sort of game. And they're all saying how good it is. I thought, you know, I'll get that version. Had some extra money, so that's what I did. Okay. I'm going to stretch. This is, we are going to break the hour mark. So, car boot stuff. <laughs> so like I say, uh, might splice in some footage of me buying some of this stuff. Uh, there's a couple of weeks worth of stuff here. Um, I'll start with these. Now, this lot was from a chap. He's a reseller, buys games and stuff. Um, and he was having a stall. He said, he said, I'll come have a look later once you've looked around the other bit. Um, his prices were pretty good. I think he was... He has a storage unit and he's saying it's costing him like 100 quid a day, uh, 100 quid a week to store stuff there. And he says he just wants to clear it. So so we're not talking cheap prices here, but uh, I think I can remember how much these were. So first up I bought Resident Evil 2, just disc only. That was £2. I thought that was pretty good. You know, might find a case at some point. Um, and then I bought some PlayStation 1 games. I'll leave that one to the last because that's pretty cool. Um, first up, this cost me 10 quid off him. Bishy Bashy Special. I've already got this, but I know it's about a £20 game. But it is very nice condition. Just thought I'd take it to a convention, put 20 on it. I should get that back. Uh, one for me to keep. We've got Crash Team Racers. Black Label. At last, we have it. Um, very nice condition again. So normally I won't pay these sort of prices, but I thought they were fairly decent, so that. Um, and then I bought a copy of Fantasy VII, uh, £3, that's all you wanted for that one. Uh, no manual on that, but I've checked all the discs. Uh, it's got the demo as well, platinum version. Um, say it's about 15 quid at the game show, so once I've swapped the case out. Um, and then it was like, I sort of had these last few bits and he says oh there's a mega cd game in there if you're interested you can count for a quid so picked it up i thought ah i, I could get a couple of quid for it at cx uh, not cx at the game show so i bought that um when i got home i was looking at it i was just like okay that's not supposed to be in there so you've got the standard game in there but then also in there was okay there's a shitty pc game in there ignore that in the back in the back we've got a mega cd demo of slam city so i know some people collect these demos I'm not sure what i was originally in or maybe it was on a magazine and there's also a copy of batman returns in there 
Shame it's not Batman versus Batman and Robin because that's like a two hundred pound game. But uh, yeah, so nice to find that in there for for a squiddly did. That and uh, now this he had a couple of these. Um, so the game is it's a PlayStation One game, Agent Armstrong. So it's not that sought after game. It's fairly rare. I don't think I've really seen it. I don't think I've ever seen it. It's one of those you probably overlook. But what makes this interesting is this little sticker on here. And it's not going to focus, but it says rare designs on designs on the future. And uh, that's a old rare logo from, you know, uh, people who made Banjo Kazooie and stuff. And they're based in Leicestershire, so it odds are on unless she has a lot of promotional stuff and stuff from rare floating around in Leicester. Um now supposedly this sticker corresponds with uh, some sort of library they used to have or like games room they used to have at rare and they used to buy these games in obviously catalogue them and then suppose they'd use them for either just like uh, play them in their spare time or just get inspiration from them. Uh, so, okay, you want a 10 quid for this, which say it's quite a sought after game, but not that rare. Oh, uh, yeah, but well, I thought that was awesome. So, yeah, so this came from Rare. Well, it's awesome little find. So, yeah, okay, what else we got? Uh, bought these on a Saturday car boot, which was yesterday actually. We bought. Uh, these DVDs were 20p each. Uh, checked a couple for a CX for yeah. We've got Sergeant Bilko 20p, that's three pounds at CX. Uh, music DVDs always good to check. Uh, Rolling Stones that's like one pound fifty. Oh, 20p. We've got a uh, woman had a Wii, this is one of the last cars that came in. Uh, Wii with some games in. I think she wanted 25 for it all. So I said, Would you separate the games? She said, Yeah, that's fine. So for two pound, I got Mario Party Eight, which is actually very nice condition. I don't think she's ever used it. And then last but not least, I saw this in a box. So there's no real value in it. I might keep it because I quite like a good car game. It's Need for Speed Shift Special Edition. It comes in like this weird tire, tire um, box for a quid. I thought, yeah, I get that. So CX for all that. Um, okay. What should I do this in? Um, okay, I have footage of me buying these. I might splice it in. Um, but we've got Nintendogs. And an empty case for that. So I'll roll the footage now, hopefully. Uh, no, that's not the game in there. Oh, right. Different game. Um, it's a different game. Oh, it's still Nintendo. Mind you, it's, it's uh, still Nintendo. Yeah. Where's the other box? But the 50p, we've got, we got a spare box. Can have the other box as well? Well, 50p. Yeah, okay, I'll get that. No, people, you see, somebody dumped these on us. Oh, right, okay. A days ago. So, thank you. We've Cheers. Just brought it, you know. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Another game here, um, Burnout Revenge. I'll roll the footage now. Thank you, cheers. Okay. Right, brilliant, thank you. So yeah, it was in that big bag of stuff. There was a couple of other games in there you probably couldn't see. Uh, like, there was a, some not all right PS2 games, but for two quid each, I thought, nah. Uh, this is really water damaged. 
But yeah, two quid. I think it's about six pound in CX. And that. Um, I don't think I've got any more footage. I think that's it. Uh, if I do, I'll splice it in. Um, Warman out some Xbox games. Pulled this one out. This was a pound, uh, 50p, sorry. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, Wrath of Cortex. Not the best condition. Mine, again, it's been water damaged. Um, I might have footage of that. I might not. I can't remember what footage I've got. Um, some more Xbox games. Quite a lot of original Xbox at the car boot there was. Uh, I got these four games, 50p each. Uh, one of them doesn't have a disc in. I was sort of filming at the time. And for some reason, I didn't check the discs. Because I, I guess I was filming. I just wanted to get it done. But there's a couple here I'm going to keep. A couple here to sell. So we've got Serious Sam, I think that's all there. Got to keep that one. X-Men Next Dimensions. We broke the hour mark. It's a landmark achievement. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront, it's a nice one. It's about an eight to 10 pound game. And Batman, Rise of Sin 2, two is there. Yeah. That's the one no disc. God damn it, it's probably in the Xbox. Um, yeah, so empty case on that. So, I don't think I have the footage of that. Uh, next up, um, this was probably one of the best finds. So, 3DS on the floor, chat picks it up. Uh, I pick up this box, which has a DS light in and the charger. So at first I thought, oh, well, he's got the DS, I've got the box, so this ain't going to work. But yeah, it turns out there's two DSs. Uh, this one's just a white one, but the condition on this is that I don't think they've ever used it. It is absolutely mint condition. Uh, the only problem is the box doesn't have the uh, internals, so CX won't take it as boxed. In fact, they never take anything as boxed for some weird reason, even when it's great condition so yeah so I had that and then he put his down so I was just like so I grabbed that as well I think it didn't have a charger so she so said five quid each so I was grabbed them uh, and then there was this on the floor which is a Nintendo Wi-Fi USB connector um, they used to be fairly good money in these because it's quite sought after but I assume no one really has the need for this um, Basically, if you've got a wired internet connection, you basically if you don't have Wi-Fi, you buy one of these. Um, it's like two quid at CX, but say get my two quid for that. Um, I'll take that one. It's actually it was a it's a Nintendo one, but obviously it's all scratched. That was that? So that that was the tenner for that. And then we got um, this little. So I bought this, um, so it's a record player, I've already got a record player, but I saw this one and I thought, oh it's quite nice, looks the part more than the one I've got, um, it's an ion, I think that's how you say it, uh, but it's got, it's like a wood finish, which I thought was quite nice, um, it's got the leads, um, he wanted 10 quid for that, uh, I've knocked it down to 8. And I sort of looked at the reviews on it. Turns out the reviews are not uh, very good. They criticise the sound quality quite a lot. So now I'm just like, eh, I might just keep it for now. Um, and then later down the line, uh, I just I might buy one. I might go like Richie's, Richard Sound or something because I know they they know this shit. Because I, I wouldn't mind having a real nice record player, even if it cost me like 200, 300 quid. Just to have some nice sound quality. Because I do like my vinyl. So for 8 quid, that's not too bad. Um, this was £3 this lot. Um, it was on the table. So as it was still there, actually. Probably because it was beat up. But it was 3 quid. It's a DS. Now, I didn't open it up. Because again, I was filming at the time. See there. It's... Uh, basically scratched really deep so it still works funny enough I've tried it, it still works nothing wrong with it 
But yeah, because I don't see X will take that. But uh, I had three games in there as well. We've got Crash 2 and Spyro. It's not focusing. We'll keep going though. Uh, Finding Nemo and the Incredibles. And a really beat up copy of Wario Land 4. And there's also this an empty case for Super Mario DS. So, empty case, yee. I bought three quid. That's, you know what? I'll take that to the cup. I'll take that when I stand at the car boot. I should get a fiver for that. I say it all works fine. Uh, I think there was a charger with that as well. The charger's over there though. That was that. Um, I have got footage of this. Um, there might be music playing in the background, so it might be mute. I'm not sure. Uh, I might not even bother showing you. It's a PS3 controller, which uh, there's something rattling in it, but I've tried it. It's fully working. Not sure. All the buttons. It needs a good clean. It's a bit. I don't know what's been. Someone's been spilt on it, so I might have to take it apart and look at it. Um, but yeah, I can put that with the PS3 I bought from the charity shop, and uh, just have to get that to take to CX. Probably get like forty quid for it. Say, so, I think some of the buttons are really sticky. I don't think that's through the rattling. I just think someone spilt something on it. So that. Now the last thing, this was actually not from, this is a couple of weeks ago this, but I never actually showed it. Um, this was, like literally we are going to leave and then a, like a house clearance bloke turned up and he pulled this out. So I jumped straight in there. It's a PS3 500 gig slim, super slim you could say. Um, I've checked it, I had a quick check there. Uh, he wanted 25 for it. I was just like, yeah, why is it the car boot? Like, it seems fairly cheap. Um, really nice condition so it's all there it's got the bags everything um, and then he had a couple other bits um, nothing great he had this PlayStation 2 game um, Spyro The Eternal Night for PS2 uh, when I opened it also had a, a copy of Spyro 2 in there another copy another loose copy of Spyro 2 I've got tons of them so that's that and then PS2 controller. Um, now, one thing I've noticed about these controllers is, see, I'm still waffling. If you're still watching this video, give yourself a pat on the back. <laughs> um, just here, no, just here, sorry, it's back to front. There's a little H. You can probably just make out the right in there. I found if it says, if it has a little H there, I might have to put a little picture here, a close up. Um, if it has a H there, it won't work. I've never had one of these PS2 controllers uh, which works if it has a H screwed on there. Um, I'm not even joking. If it says H there, it won't work. Now, if you find one with an A written on it, um, they work. And they, they always work. Um, unless, obviously, they're broken and stuff, like broke apart. But on the whole, if it says A on it, it will probably work. So that's my new thing at the car boot. It says A. And I know this because every time I buy one, because um, basically I've got a whole stack of PS2s over there and broken controllers. Every time I get something from the car boot and has an A on it, I go, yes, I can take one of them to this, to fucking CX and get rid of it. Um, and they work pretty much every time. So, yeah. So I was like, would you... Do 25 with these two thrown in. He said, yeah, that's fine. So that's that. So not a bad price, I think, for a, PS, a slim, a super slim PS3. But yeah, so there, the handy hint on the PS2 controllers there. If it says A on the back, it will probably work. If it says H, don't, don't bother picking up, basically. Um, that's from my experience, anyway. We're nearly there, honestly. I, we're, ne we're nearly done. I feel like, ah, oh, my back. We're in an hour and 11 minutes. Yes, it's the longest video I've ever made. So, last thing. I uh, don't even know why I bought this. It was £20 from game. I bought a new yar for 20 quid. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. Still sealed at the moment. Uh, someone sliced through it there on the top. Um, and then I also bought an extra controller for it. For a five off. <laughs> Honestly, I have no clue why I bought it. Just... 
I just had some. I just saw it. And I was like, "That's cool." And then I bought it. And I was just like, "Don't know why I bought it." <laughs> I think that's everything. Unless I've left something. No. That is it. Oh, I can breathe. I need a drink as well. That's a lot of talking. Um, so yeah. Hope you've enjoyed this. If you're still there, are you still watching this? Let me know. Let me know if you watched the whole thing. Um, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.